Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Weiwei, and um, Shane and Matt, we're here to talk about Push Me, Pull You. And I'll just do a quick, if I know how to do this, introduction on um, the applications that we developed and why we developed this application. And Shane and Matt will take over to talk about the development and design process we do and uh, the next steps for the future uh, improvement. So Push Me, Pull You comes from Dr. Doolittle. Um, it's a Ruby application running behind firewall to pull the content from, from repos uh, Fedora repository in response to a user uh, action on the institutional repository interface. And uh, it will construct a lightweight our archival information package for each object and push that content into our long-term preservation storage, OpenStack Swift. So that is our current repository stack. It has a uh, era, our institutional repository, developed on Ruby on Rails framework, currently based on Sophia 6.2, which is a Samvera um, head, as uh, Lisa just talked about. Um, Samvera, um, is built up uh, upon Fedora uh, uh, repository. So it talks natively to Fedora 4 and it stores bit streams and metadata of the objects in Fedora in the form of uh, RDF triples. And sometimes, most of the time, stores in multiple uh, related objects. I put an emphasis on currently because we are in the process of redesign our repository um, that are not based on the Semvera head. Uh, but nonetheless, the workflow we designed for Push Me Pull You uh, depends very little on the front interface. And we use OpenStack Swift for our long-term preservation storage. Um, and OpenStack Swift, uh, many of you may have already heard of and used it, is an open source and freely available uh, project, part of the OpenStack project. It's a highly available, distributed, and eventually consistent object store. It has built-in replication, eventually consistency, uh, fixie checks, versioning, internal audit, quarantine, and corrects, all of which plays very important role in ensuring the integrity of the preserved objects. So we have adopted OpenStack Swift at UFA since uh, 2013. And uh, at UFA, uh, we have planned for different level of preservation for different resources and their preservation needs. And we strive to reach for higher level of preservation for our IR materials. However, the challenge has been how to actively manage the continuously expanding digital content that flow into the IR and through different channels while we're in this process of redesigning um, our platform and the external technology environment has been changed, but we have the time and resources const constraints that we need to balance. So with all those challenges in mind, we have a pricing need to build a lightweight tool and workflows to meet those baseline requirements for our ongoing dig digital preservation commitment. So I mentioned archival information package or APE, hence the picture. Um, it's an open, it's an information package consisting of uh, content information and associated preservation description information, which is necessary for adequate preservation of the content information. So usually con includes three components, the content, metadata, and packaging. And each component consists of one or more files for us to capture the comprehensive image of the original object. Um, I couldn't find a ape on a scale, so sorry, it's a monkey. But it's the lightweight perspective here. <laughs> to make it easier to implement and incorporate that into our existing technology stack without, with, without much investment into external systems or design of integrations while we're still trying to figure out all the, all the uh, different targets we're trying to do for the integration and still be able to meet that baseline requirement we want to do. So we introduced a lightweight ape design to simplify the workflow to construct. Um, so this is a, a diagram that for the that light, lightweight ape. So it will contain three directories, uh, objects, thumbnail, and uh, logs. The metadata are uh, RDF dumps from Fedora objects, including main descriptive metadata, any versioning and permission information, and it contains the original bitstream and thumbnail um, images or uh, information. And it has logs such as uh, cartization logs and fixie reports, as some of those are really native from the Fedora 
um, or the Samvera workflow, and the log of uh, ape creation process. So all of the information are either available in Fedora or Solar, and the ape will be backed and pushed into a Swift in, uh, with a unique identifier. So why we need a push me pull you? I uh, eluded uh, some of those later on, uh, earlier on, that we need a lightweight um, uh, workflow that uh, uh, to help us going through this phase of uh, redesigning our dis uh, digital asset management system platform, and uh, before we can move into the full integration with tools like Archive Medica in the future. Um, we want to ensure that any content flow into our uh, repository can be preserved safely and timely uh, into the preservation storage. So it may not be structured in the optimal structure or have all the information we need long term, but uh, at least we capture all the essential information we need to do future migration to uh, full ape if necessary. And uh, we also face some, some of the security requirements put forward by our IT department that direct access from a publicly facing network where our IR and repository, a federal repository sits to our preservation storage pose a high risk to the security and integrity of the content we com commit to preserve. So anyone who hacks into our public facing network can potentially connect to our preservation storage and sabotage the content in there and that's not the risk we're willing to take. So we've decided to develop an application that can facilitate the flow of the content in a way that minimizes such risk. So I'll pass on to Matt to talk about the development. This work. Okay. Yes. Uh, so a couple quick notes about how we approach the development of the project. Our goal was really to do the simplest thing that could possibly, our goal was to do the simplest thing that could really possibly work. Um, uh, really, uh, we're not historically really great at doing small, simple, achievable projects. We tend to like take on too much, as I suspect a lot of people do. Uh, so we aim to cut as much scope as possible. Sort of our guiding motto was, you aren't gonna need it driven development. Um, <laughs> Lots of people had lots of pie in the sky ideas for things that we could do. We could have had complex logging, really great reporting. We could have had web applications to check the status of preservation of items. We did none of that. Uh, we push back as much as possible. We just dump information into simple text files that we search if we need information on something. So we really aim to do as little custom development as we possibly could. And Shane's going to talk a little bit about some of the challenges we ran into. All right, so the, the first challenge we had was uh, when to trigger a preservation event. Um, this is not always an easy situation when you're dealing with live data, right? Data that's always constantly changing. When do you decide this is a good period in time to go preserve that, right? Uh, so our first solution was to go look at Fedora. Fedora has a messaging service uh, built in JMS. And what that means is basically if you enable this, uh, anything that happens in Fedora, any object, um, any events on the object, such as a create, an edit, a delete, um, basically a message will get created and that will get pushed to a queue and you could subscribe to that queue and listen to all the, the events that happened. So it's actually really cool. Uh, it's a good way to see how some, some Vera or Hyrax or for us, uh, our Sophia app was interacting with Fedora. Um, but, um, you know, it's, it sounds great, but it actually, uh, this creates a lot of noise if you actually look at what's happening in Fedora when some Vera is interacting with it. Um, so here's an example of an item deposit. So uh, basically I go to the item form and it already creates two objects. It's, it's hard to see and I couldn't fit everything on the screen because there's so much, but uh, basically it already creates two objects in the two events happen in Fedora already just by going to the, the slash new screen, right? Uh, if I go fill out the form, uh, upload my file and go click save, and then it just a whole bunch of cascades of saves and updates. Basically, almost 70 messages get created, right? Um, and then uh, for us, uh, there's also background jobs that get fired after a, a successful ingest, right? You're gonna go do your char characterization, so you run fits on it, uh, do your derivatives. Uh, for us, we generate DOIs for our objects, so, and this calls even more saves, so, uh, which create even more uh, JMS messages, right? So you're probably looking at almost 100 JMS messages just for a simple uh, item ingest, right? So, you know, which message uh, do, you, do you take into account to go, okay, this is the one I'm going to go preserve my item on, right? It's not always easy, right? Um, so there's got to be a better way. There's too much noise, so you have to filter it somehow. So if we go up the stack, 
Uh, if we go up to the Rails layer, which is what Simvira is, it's a Rails app. Um, Rails provides what you call callbacks. Okay, um, basically any uh, code, basically anything that happens on your model, you can go trigger um, some some code. So here we're going to hook into the after save callback on the item. So when an item gets saved, you can go trigger, um, basically go trigger our preservation event. Um, uh, but now we have a new problem because, as I said, you know, items get saved multiple times during ingest, or even if someone goes to in the update form, go update it multiple times, right? Uh, you're still going to call save lots of times. So uh, I'm going to let pass this up to Matt to go talk about how to solve that one out. So we decided what we really needed was a priority queue, something where uh, the le least recently saved item was like the highest priority for preservation, and the most recently saved item was our lowest priority. In that way, we can minimize churn and not be constantly re-preserving things that are being saved multiple times during ingest. There's lots of complex solutions out there. Uh, the couple on there, RabbitMQ, ZeroMQ, uh, they're really complex, they're hard to set up, they're hard to maintain. It's one more layer in an already complex, like uh, Hyrax, Sophia stack. Um, so it didn't feel simple enough. We hit upon the idea of using Redis. Uh, which we were already using, which is a very simple key value store and which has lists and sets that from experience can be really simple queues. Really quickly, uh, Redis sets, they guarantee that one, an item's in there once and only once. Sorted sets, same thing, but in some kind of order, in this case, least recently added to most recently added. If you add an item that's already in there, it just pops to the back of the queue. We added a little bit of custom logic that says it has to be in there for at least 15 minutes to really try to minimize that preservation churn. And the result was that no matter how many times an item gets saved during ingestion, it is in that queue only once, it's in the order we want it in, and we're not churning pretty much at all. All right, so running out of time, so just quickly uh, go over this. Um, so this was what we ended up implementing. Um, so this was, um, Basically, after you figure out requirements and figure out the big uh, challenges, this is what we ended up uh, developing and implementing. So, um, yeah, so basically the IR pushes the stuff into the priority queue, push me pull you monitor that queue, we'll actually go uh, trigger the preservation off of the queue, uh, go grab all the data, create the ape, and push it to Swift for storage, right? Um, so uh, this is an interesting project because it was kind of a, a greenfield project uh, so we kind of really uh, uh, went back to our processes, our software processes, and uh, project management processes, and kind of went over with a magnifying glass and how can we improve. Uh, so we use GitHub extensively with a ZenHub extension that's based for project, ma uh, uh, project management tool. Um, so basically all of our, our planning, documentation, uh, all of our conversations and our development was all in GitHub. Um, Push Behold is open source, so there's a link for that you want to go check it out. Um, we've done Agile before, but we've kind of always been walking through the motions. Uh, we would, would never like do retrospectives or do sprint, actual sprint planning. So this time we actually went back and did it kind of religiously from the book, right? Uh, the project took about four weeks to complete with about four full-time developers. And we did a, a pull request workflow. So basically that, what that means is every single piece of code that came in and was committed to a master was signed off by another developer, right? So. Um, Another thing that we really strive to do at our, on our team is test-driven development. So basically every big um, component of code that went in came with tests, right? Automated tests, right? Um, so we actually have 94% test coverage. Our tests were written in our spec. Um, we, we use continuous integration heavily on our team, running push me pull you on multiple versions of Ruby, for example. Um, and this is all open source tools, all free as well. Uh, so using Travis CI, cover all is uh, danger for just PR little um, nitpicky things. Uh, another thing that we try to do is make sure all of our developers are, you know, talking the same stuff, right? S same style, same language, uh, and that's enforced by you know these free tools as well, Hound, Rubicop, and Editor Config, right? So everyone's using spaces instead of tabs, right? That type of thing, right? Uh, I'll pass it off to Matt. All right, we're almost out of time, so I'm going to plow through this, but. Uh, Working in the Ruby community, we really are able to leverage, you know, everybody else's work. We're standing on the shoulder of giants. So we really, I think, met our goal of writing very little custom code. We probably wrote more tests than we did actual code. So really, push me, pull you is just glue that's connecting a bunch of standard components. 
Uh, we also brought in a paid service called Rollbar uh, to really try to step up our game in terms of application monitoring. Uh, We've been doing server monitoring in the past, but application monitoring wasn't like something that we were super strong at. So we found this to be really, really helpful in terms of tracking down errors, debugging stuff. It aggregates and notifies any exceptions that happen throughout the application. So we can get stack traces, we can get data associated with problems. Um, it was a huge success for us, I think. Our next steps are gonna be gemifying ape creation and Swift ingestion so that we can use it in some other things. We want to bring in support for file based, file system based ingestion instead of just objects that are in Fedora as it works right now. And we need to uh, extend support to some other platforms we have at the libraries that require preservation, not just our institutional repository. So questions. <laughs> 